Hello, I'm Dr. George Cressman. I'm the historian here at the Camp Landing Museum. Today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the great 1944 hurricane. In October of 1944, a Category 4 hurricane swept across the Western Caribbean Sea and reached Florida. The weather disturbance formed very, very quickly and became a tropical storm within hours of its initial formation on the 12th of October, 1944. The disturbance intensified to a hurricane on the 13th of October and moved slowly westward. But by the 16th of October, the hurricane turned sharply northward and made landfall on Cuba. And on 18 October, they, it, the storm had a peak wind uh, a surge of 145 miles per hour, an intense storm. The hurricane then weakened somewhat as it passed over the dry Tortugas and reached Florida near Saratoga, Sarasota as a Category 2 hurricane on the 19th of October. Camp Landing lay right in the path of this storm and the post became a refuge spot for many neighboring communities. By October of 1944, Camp Landing was serving as an infantry replacement training center with a training capacity of 65,000, a very large post. During the Great Hurricane of 1944, Camp Landing's troops helped to evacuate Florida residents from endangered areas and the post served as a place of refuge for these evacuees. So the Great Hurricane of 1944 arrived in the Camp Landing uh, vicinity on the 20th of October, 1944. Preparations were well underway for what was called H-Day, Hurricane Day. The post motor pool sent buses to civilian areas on the perimeter of Kingsley Lake and to Keystone Heights. 500 women and children were brought from those areas to the post. Trucks were sent to both St. Augustine and Jacksonville to assist in evacuating low-lying areas in those cities. Those trucks were used to take refuges to temporary shelter places. The drivers of those trucks had to deal with uh, increasing winds, very strong winds, and very heavy rainfall. In many cases, as these drivers attempted to move evacuees from, from low-lying areas, they had to stop to clear roads of downed trees and power lines. The work motor pool worked for almost 48 hours, straight through, without any relief. As uh, evacuees were brought on to Camp Landing, those coming from low air lying areas adjacent to the post in St. Augustine, as they were brought onto the post, most of them were housed in the post field house. Some of them were housed in the service clubs. Food was provided through the post mess hall. Over 500 uh, refugees sheltered on the post with some 400 of them in the field house itself. As the storm intensified, the post electrical power supplied from Stark was lost due to downed wires. Post maintenance workers were immediately dispatched to repair the outage and power was shortly restored. Road maintenance was essential as down trees blocked the roads on the post. However, only one post road section was washed out. A great tribute to the, the effectiveness of the original construction drainage system. Hospital operations continued throughout the storm, some 40 hours long. When electrical power was lost to the post, the hospital power plant was able to maintain uh, hospital operations with auxiliary power. That 
uh, auxiliary power and uh, uh, supply to the uh, station hospital was supplied through coal-fired boilers. Because the, of the very heavy rains, the coal could not be used as it came off of the, of the uh, coal piles. It had to be dried. And the way it was dried was by hand. Think about that image. A bunch of men with a bunch of towels picking up individual pieces of coal, drying them off, and putting them in the feed augers to go into the boiler. Across Florida in this October 1944 hurricane, there were 18 deaths as a result of the storm, along with an estimated $63 million in property damage. This is in 1944, $63 million. The large storm finally weakened as it passed over Jacksonville as a tropical storm. There were some happy notes. There was a lot of anxiety in the, throughout the storm, but there were some happy notes. First, there was minimal damage. Okay, storm to the damage, uh, storm damage to the post was surprisingly little. There were no injuries resorting from the storm. The camp newspaper noted there was no damage to the 37 post exchange branches, including the post beer garden. During the storm, the officer's mess mascot, the dog Shanghai, gave birth to a litter of six puppies. Not to be outdone, the officer's, officer's mess pet cat, Burma, gave birth to a litter of three kittens. So thanks for watching this Camp Landing history video. I'd like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look at our other videos. There's lots of good history stories there. Come visit with us. We're open every day from noon to four, and we most look forward to your visit. So for our, our museum staff and for our terrific volunteers, this is Dr. George Cressman signing off.